Welcome to Glee for Math Nerds. As you may know, Journey's song Don't Stop Believin' skyrocketed in popularity at karaoke parties after it was featured in the first episode of Glee in 2009. But unfortunately, the ability of the average karaoke singer to hit the high notes at the end of the song has remained both constant and painfully low over time. Because of Glee's popularity, there's been a huge increase in the attendance at high school Glee clubs nationwide, as well as an increase in the number of people who know what a Glee club is. It's also increased the number of football players trying out for musicals, but that number was actually already on the rise thanks to High School Musical, aka Glee Part 1. So the average Spanish teacher spends 10% of his time eating lunch in the teacher's lounge and 90% teaching Spanish. Will Schuster, on the other hand, spends only 2% of his time actually teaching Spanish, while also spending 30% eating lunch in the teacher's lounge, and 30% running Glee Club, and 38% shopping for skinny ties and form-fitting vests. This is a histogram showing the number of times I've watched each episode of Glee Season 2. As you can see, Episode 2 was my, shall we say, favorite. Here are things that are annoying. Here are things that are on Glee. And here are things that are annoying on Glee. Speaking of which, here's a histogram showing the number of solos Rachel has had on the show. A number higher than all other cast members combined. A number so high it is rivaled only by the number of times the gang has learned an important life lesson about self-acceptance and or homophobia. As you can see, there is a direct correlation between the number of lines spoken in a given episode by the principal, Sue Sylvester, or Brittany, and the number of times I laugh out loud. Now, the opposite of laughter is crying, and there's also a direct correlation between the number of conversations between Kurt and his dad and the number of times I shed a tear. Yes, people, Glee has made me cry. And side note, the y-axis also represents the Glee Club's semi-creepy bearded piano player because that guy never has any lines. Before Glee, many of America's young people already aspired to become pop stars when they grew up, but few actually achieved this goal, creating what I call the pop star disillusionment gap. But because of Glee, now even more people want to become pop stars, meaning that Glee was on track to increase the total disillusionment in our society. But that all changed when Rebecca Black came along and proved that anyone, I mean literally anyone, can become a pop star. A-M-P-U-T-E-E, listen up people, don't feel sorry for me. A-M-P-U-T-E-E, the glass is half full, yeah I still got three.